Hey, this is Bubba from Wild Birds Unlimited in Gainesville, Florida. As a result of some of the discussion that we've been having about the bird videos that we've been putting up on our Facebook and YouTube pages, I decided to make a video that helps people understand how you can keep squirrels off of bird feeders. We talk about this in the store all the time, but now I'm discovering that there is a need for us to have discussions about it online because there are a lot of people seeing these videos who haven't been educated about the basic methods of squirrel proofing your bird feeders yet. So here we go. First of all, my favorite one is to establish a pole system that basically you're putting a pole into the ground and providing an obstruction, which we call a baffle. This is a 10, 10 inch uh, steel squirrel baffle on the pole system that we carry at Wild Birds Unlimited um, called the Advanced Pole System by Holscher Products. There are three critical elements of a successful squirrel proof central pole based baffling system that you have to get right. The first one is you've got to use good material. This again is steel. There are a lot of baffles out there that you can get that, is, that are made of material that a squirrel can just chew through. So if a squirrel can climb up the pole system to the bottom of the baffle and then chew through the material so that the baffle drops to the ground, then the squirrel is just going to go to the ground, jump over the baffle, climb up the pole, and have its way with your feeders. Second is you've got to have the baffle set at the right height. And that height is anywhere from about belly uh, to shoulder high. It can be higher, of course. I have this one on the higher side of things. Uh, and but all of the feeders are set above that height. That height is crucial because a squirrel you can't have a squirrel going to the ground below it and then just jumping up to the top of the baffle and then climbing to the feeders, jumping to the feeders and having its way with the feeders again. And third, and probably where most people go wrong, is that you have to establish a radius of clearance of 10 feet around the central pole system where there's nothing within that radius that a squirrel can use to jump over the baffle. A tree, the side of the house, a fence, a rock, anything rigid enough for a squirrel to be able to leap from. If it can, then it will jump over this baffle and be on your feeders all day long. If you establish that clearance, then the squirrel is not going to be able to climb up past this baffle and then you can do above that baffle, you can do whatever you want and any of those feeders is going to be squirrel proof. Now, you can see that around this baffle system, I have a few things that are about 10 feet away, that old sweet gum snag, and a big fire spike bush over here that is just about nine and a half to 10 feet away. You can sometimes get away with about eight feet of clearance around the, around the baffle, uh, depending on what you have hanging out from the feeder, but for the purposes of, uh, let's be safe here and conservative and go with uh, establishing a 10 foot radius for good squirrel proofing on a baffle system. The baffle that's on my pole system, incidentally, is a raccoon baffle. This is a squirrel baffle. You can see that it's a foot shorter and it has two inches less diameter. If you have raccoons, you're going to need this baffle. If you don't have raccoons, then you can get away with a smaller baffle. My second favorite method, and what I consider to be the second most versatile way of squirrel proofing, is to have a baffle from above. When you have a baffle from above that keeps a squirrel from climbing down past it from above, then you need six to eight feet of clearance underneath it where there's nothing in that radius that a squirrel can use to jump from underneath to get to the baffle here or to get to the feeder here. So a squirrel has to come up the tree, out the branch, and down the baffle. When it has to do that, it's not getting to your feeder. The baffle that I have that I'm using here is the Arendelle Sky Cafe baffle. And what happens is the squirrel comes down to this point and the baffle, so a, an eastern gray squirrel weighs about a pound, maybe a pound and a half at the most. And that's not enough to cause that baffle to collapse far enough to the squirrel so that the squirrel can drop down to the feeder below it. You might notice that some of the sweet gum branch extends inside of the radius that we might be concerned about. But this branch is wispy enough so that when the squirrel goes to the end of it, it's going to have trouble leaping from it to this point. If that ends up not being true, all you need to do is take a set of pruning shears or a lopper and bring this branch off up here and perhaps this one here. And you've reestablished the radius of clearance that you need to make this a squirrel proof feeder. The third method of squirrel proofing that I want to talk to you about is using a feeder that has built-in squirrel resistance. And by that I mean a feeder like the Eliminator by Brome, which is what this is, that has a shroud that drops under the weight of the squirrel and conceals the seed from the squirrel. So the seed ports 
are here, here, and all the way around in five other places. And when the squirrel's weight is on the shroud around those feeder ports, the shroud drops and the squirrel can no longer get to the seed. This method of squirrel proofing is particularly useful if you have a spot where you want a feeder and you cannot establish the clearance that you need around a pole system. In other words, that 10 feet around a pole system or if you can't establish the six to eight feet that you need around a feeder that's hung underneath a baffle. If you only have a foot and a half of clearance from anything that you're hanging it from, then this will work. The reason that you need a foot and a half with a feeder that has a shroud that drops under the weight of the squirrel is because if the squirrel can keep its weight on whatever it's climbing, whatever it's climbing on, and then reach past the shroud that drops into the seed ports, then it will beat the system. Otherwise, as long as the squirrel has to put its weight on this shroud, the shroud will drop under the weight of the squirrel and the squirrel won't be able to get to the seed. The last method of squirrel proofing that I want to talk about is using safflower. So you may have noticed that there's another feeder here. This feeder, there's nothing about this feeder that's inherently squirrel proof. There's no baffle above it. There's no pole system and baffle below it. There's also no shroud that drops under the weight of the squirrel. So there's nothing about that feeder. It's an excellent feeder, but there's nothing about that feeder that is squirrel proof. That's why in a feeder like that, that's hung so close to the side of the house and other things that a squirrel can jump from, we're using safflower. Now safflower is probably the least squirrel proof of the methods that we've discussed. It is definitely the least squirrel proof of the methods that we've already discussed. But I like safflower because sometimes you don't want to worry about a feeder that has moving parts. And if that's the case, or if you just want to use a feeder that doesn't otherwise have any squirrel resistance, then safflower is a good way to go. Thanks for listening. I hope that clears things up for you. If you have any questions, come by the store. It's 4212 Northwest 16th Boulevard, or give us a call 352-381-1997. Email us gainesvillewbu at hotmail.com. If you are outside of the Gainesville area and you want to know where your nearest Wild Birds Unlimited store is, then go to maps.wbu.com and you'll find in the middle of that page, just above the map of North America, a place to put in your zip code, hit enter, and then you will see generated for you a list of the Wild Birds Unlimited stores that are nearest to you.